Boom. And we are live in the Bank Plus studio with our friend and the hit king, uh, New York Mets. Jake Mangum joins us in studio. The SEC Insider Hit is brought to you by our partner, Farm Bureau Insurance. Bundle your auto and home. Save with your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent in any of the 82 counties in the state of Mississippi. Jake Mangum, good morning, buddy. How are you? Be back, man. It's great to be back. Blake, it's good to see you. I'm happy to see you too, man. Always a pleasure to see you, Jake. Always a pleasure. The Hit King, man. It's Thanks. weird. Weird that like we text each other occasionally. That's uh, as a kid, I never would have imagined texting someone who has records as a Mississippi State baseball holder. So, and he's been in kinda Florida during the fall. Let's 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 start with kind of your your schedule the last few months. But what all what all went down? What did y'all do? when you were down in South Florida at the New York Mets facility this fall? Well, I got to spring training in February. March 11th, Corona hit, and we all got sent home. So I quarantined for a while. Uh, me and my group of my friends, we, we worked out in garages for a while during quarantine. Like We were just doing like just some straight-up like Rankin County garage lifts. It was awesome, man. It was <laughs> so much it. fun. Like Me, Gardner Minshew, Houston Smith, Cannon Gibbs, Andrew Lula. Like we had a whole crew together just grinding it out in garages it, it was fun and then uh and then my like so one of my dad's like business partners his son plays baseball at duke will hoyle um nice and he my dad got wind of this like hey man there's this place in south florida you know right outside of west palm beach uh eric cressy he's actually like the strength and conditioning guy for the yankees okay. um I, I text the Mets. Uh, I was like, hey, is it okay if I go down to like this Yankees guy's facility? And they were like, absolutely. We love this guy. Go down there. The whole month, or three months really, June, July, and August, I was getting big league at-bats, man. Like big league all-stars. Like every like three days a week, I was getting like 10 at-bats against big league arms. So it, it was the biggest blessing for me ever to go down there and do that. And I was able to work out down there, you know, do some things to my body and my swing that I needed to work on. It it, it worked out great. Um, then the month so that of, was three months. That was three months cool. long. Um, cool. Me and Gene Wood, Jackson Prep shortstop, yeah. I graduated with. He's a six-year senior at TCU. Lived together in June. He left. JT again came and moved down after the Mets drafted him. So me and JT were living down there in July, and then in August we got a big crew of us to come down there and split rent at this house because. You know, minor league wages aren't aren't that great. <laughs> but we were split splitting the house between five of us. Peyton Plumley, Mississippi State guy, Keegan yeah. James Keegan James, Mississippi State guy, uh, JT Ginn, and a Texas guy, Blair Henley. So it was five of us in the house in August and man, we just got after it. We just got after it. Um and we and we got better down there. And then so I come back home for a little bit, and then we get an invite to fall instructional league. So the whole month of October, I was in Port St. Lucie. I went back down to Florida. I've made I've driven the drive to South Florida this year four times there and back. So eight trips. So it's been a uh, – I've put some miles on my truck this year. But, man, that's, that's part of it, though. You know, you're just looking a way to get better every day when there's not a season. Man, you, you – You made it happen. Yeah, you tell me where I can get some live at-bats. I'm going to go try to get better. And uh, it, it was awesome, man. It was such a fun experience. And then uh, camp went awesome. October, I had a four-week-long camp. We played a ton of games, probably played 20 baseball games down there. Uh, we got after down there, too. Uh, all the Mets, you know, a, a good – about 55 Mets prospects went, and it was fun, man. It, um, we quarantined in a hotel, but it was baseball, baseball, baseball all day. Jake Mangum, Hale State uh, All-American, SEC hit king on the Out of Bounds show and the Beat Up Pecan guest line. Uh, this segment is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Bundle your auto and home and save with your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Well, give me an idea. Give us an idea of kind of day to day in October. What that like games and working out and things like that. I would wake up at about six a.m. Uh, we'd head over to the field, eat breakfast, and then just get after it until about two o'clock in the afternoon. Full day, full, full, full day, and it's still hot down there. Um, we would practice for about an hour and a half, and then we'd go straight into the games and then play a full game. Um, Saw some good arms, saw some good players. All of our we had so we had a five round draft this year. Typically the baseball drafts forty rounds for y'all who don't yeah. understand baseball drafts because I still don't understand the MLB draft. Um, it was five rounds this year. JT Game was taken in the second round. Um, you know, familiar face to a lot of guys around here. Um, 
but I got to see the new guys. You know, yeah. uh, we had some new guys that showed up. Great players, man. It's just competitive environment. It's it's every player there was the you know one of the best players from where they come from. Right. And it it's just a competitive environment every single day. It's dudes that are trying to take your job, man. You know. What sure. I mean? And um, and we don't really look at it like that, but it's it's reality. It's dog eat dog. And um, you know, I became really good friends with the guys. So it was just a good good experience. So all right. The month of October, how many innings, give or take? How many games or something did you play? Seven to nine innings a day. Okay. Uh, this depends pitch limit count because we only played Mets. We just we would split up into two teams, and, the, and we would just run until we ran out of pitching. Yeah, would that be di- Cole, different? Cole Gordon was down there, Mississippi ah. State guy. Uh, JT Gim was the only player down there that wasn't able to play. They brought him anyways because he just had uh, Tommy John surgery back in uh, March. So... Yeah, so all, all three of the Mississippi State guys were down there. It was uh, it, it was good. Cole Gordon pitched well. Uh, he had he had some really good outings down there, and and he showed flashes of that curveball that we saw in 2019, that stretch in, in the postseason, and or 2018 stretch. Goodness gracious, yeah. he, he finished that year up crazy. Uh, and Cole's got a great shot. JT's he's electric. So whenever JT gets healthy again, uh, there's no doubt in my mind he'll make it. So Jake Mangum on the Out of Bounds show with the New York Mets. You'll go back in somewhere around mid-February? I'm going to go back uh, mid-February, uh, I believe. Uh, if Corona can, if we can get this vaccine out and uh, everything kind of goes back to normal, uh, hopefully February. And then your goal, you want to? Well, my, my personal goal is, is to break double A. Uh, th- that means I would have skipped low A and high A just because of this, you know, not having a year in 2020. I'm hoping to break double A, but. You know, if if I if I break high A, I, uh, I'm I got to go hit. You know, right. at the end of the day, no matter where you break, you got to go hit. Like, you hit, you play. That's the formula to every single level of baseball. High school, if you hit, you play. College, you hit, you play. It, that that's it. Now, defense is important, and defense keeps you on the field. If you're a shortstop that's struggling in the, in the batter's box, but you save a couple runs in the field, yeah, that's where it is. But at the end of the day, man, if you hit, you play. So I, wherever I break high A, double A. A miracle happens, you know. It, 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 I gotta go hit, right? I, I got, I gotta go hit. And you felt like you had a really good summer in what you just described. I did, I, and the October. I got better this year, and, and at the end of every year, you, you ask yourself, did I get better or worse this year? I, I got better this year, and and I'm really happy with the way I was able to just scavenge a scavenge a year. I mean, sure. I never thought get the workouts in, in a the normal ABs. year. I would have gotten a ton of low A, high A, double A, well, whatever, whatever I would have been this year, wherever they moved me, this, that's out of your control. But I would have gotten those level at bats. I go this summer to South Florida, somewhere I'm not very familiar with. And I got big league, like all-star arm at bats. And it was, it was very, very reassuring to me to see that and understand like, Hey, th- that that's as best as it is, is it going to get. Right. Like, it's not going to get any harder than that. Like, that's that's the level you've worked all your life to get to, and I was able to see those at-bats this summer. And and look, live at-bats are the way to get better. Sure. You can work on your swing all you want in the cages, but the only way to test that is off of live at-bats. And the better the competition, the better you get. Jake Mangum on the Abita Pecan guest line, joining us live in the Bank Plus studio. You can watch the show on YouTube. Search Out of Bounds Sports. You can also stream it on the Out of Bounds radio app. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Bundle your auto and home. Save with your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Uh, Christian Hughes. What's up, baby? (laughs) Christian Hughes, my old catcher. He said, tell him what's up. Well, hey, hey, Christian. I miss you. I actually saw Christian not too long ago. Um, Missed that guy. He was our catcher in high school. Uh, he was two years ahead of me. Noah Hughes' brother, actually. Noah Hughes is a six-year senior right now at oh, Southeast oh. Louisiana, Mississippi okay. State guy. Yeah, He's doing well. He's expecting a good year this year down in the boot, and uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for him. And then this guy asks about how is Duplantis doing? I haven't seen Antoine in a while. Um, he's doing well. I, I, look, he, he's, he's a great baseball player, and he's, he's the all-time LSU hits leader. Like that that's not something easy to do. So Antoine's going to come back next year, and I think he's going to have a big year. I know he's been working down in Louisiana, and uh, I, I miss that guy. I love Antoine to death. He's a great guy and very, very happy I've been able to room with him so much in, uh, in Pro Bowl. Someone else asked also, you said you tweet your swing, right? Is that right? Mm-hmm. You want to kind of tell us, walk us through that? 
I hate to say this because I'm sure there, there might be a little kid out there that's playing and that's playing little league baseball, and I don't want this to get in their head because it's never been what I've tried to do. Look, man, singles don't get the job done in pro ball. I have made a living off of backside singles and ground balls through the six and four hole. It worked in college. It worked in high school. I'd, I'd say it worked in college and high school. Like, but, but, <laughs> but every year when the when, when the draft when the draft rolled around, I was always like, "Man, what the hell is going on?" Like, right. like there you go. Right. Ground balls don't work in pro ball, and and I don't like. I, I want every kid that's listening or a dad out there that that works with his son. You got to learn how to be a good hitter before you learn how to hit for power. Now, when you're a little, like when, when you're hitting with your son or your little kid, like don't go up there and say hit the ball out of the yard at an early age. It's like, look, backspin's where the money's at in pro ball. It is, it is. There's just no way around it. As much as you hate it, it's just what it is. But when you're a kid, teach them how to hit. Like teach them how to stay inside a baseball and and work that back side of the field because that's that, that's the hardest thing to do. One, like, you have to learn how to be a good hitter, a pure hitter, before you start bombing doubles and home runs. Right. So at a young age, like just, just don't tell them to go out there and hit home runs. Like just work work on the fundamentals of baseball first. But the older you get, the more your body fills out. You just got to drive that baseball, man. You just got to. And talk about you being a switch hitter and what that means for you. One of the biggest advantages I have is being a switch hitter because I don't have to see a left on left curveball coming at me or right on right curveball at me. Um, now, the negative to switch hitting is that you have to hit twice as much as anyone else does because you have two different swings to worry about. And you get the change-ups. The worst pitch in baseball is the change-up. If a pitcher has a good change-up, there's just, there's just no way to, to read a change-up out of a pitcher's hand because the whole point of a change-up is to throw it like a fastball and let it fall off the table right before you get uh, to the strike zone. Curveballs you can pick up right out of the hand. But, man... When you're a switch hitter, you get a lot more change up. So it, th th there's, there's pros and cons to switch hitting. But in my situation, my way to the big leagues is showing them I can be a fourth outfielder. My foot in the door is being a fourth outfielder. And that is someone who can take, oh, the left fielder needs a day off. Jake, go play left. Right fielder needs a day off. Go play right. Got Center it. fielder needs a day off and so forth. And from a hitting perspective, I can hit from both sides of the plate so they don't have to say there's a left-hander on the mound. Don't put Jake in because he's left-handed hitter. I'm, I'm able to flip around, so I'm just a versatile outfielder. And, right. and, and that's why switch hitting comes in handy. Out of bounds, 105.9 The Zone. Jake Mangum, SEC hit king on the Abita Pecan guest line, now with the New York Mets, has been down in South Florida for several months and will go back to the New York Mets facility in February. You're listening to 105.9 The Zone. Blake, you've got a question yeah. for Jake Mangum. Well, I like what you said, Jake, because as you mentioned, the, the long ball may get you a contract in some retro retrospects, but you have to be able to do the fundamentals. I, I liken it to golf. You know, we saw Bryson DeChambeau at the Masters. That guy's, like, focused all his energy on becoming a tree trunk and just hitting the ball a country mile. It, it doesn't matter. So I like the way you put it as, like, the, the fundamentals of being able to hit the baseball is probably the hardest thing in any sport to do is just hit a baseball. So you got to be able to hit the baseball before you can hit the baseball out of the park. And I like the way you put that because, obviously, the long ball is, is what everybody's attracted to. My question, um, in part because uh, it's Egg Bowl week, would be you went 14-2 and two against Ole Miss, 12-2 and two in regular season games, and 4-0 and no in the Governor's Cup. Um, which of those wins stands out to you right now as we look at rivalry week and you go this one felt the best or it was the most meaningful or it was like oh gosh i felt like if i didn't get this one i was going to be heartbroken well just the, the whole record thing is just it, man, it, it's hard to beat anyone 14 times out of 16 in any sport yes against any team and just it's still just crazy to me how that happened i mean look it, it, it was just it, it it was just it's just wild to me like i, I i'll know like not a 20 years, 50 years from now, I'm still going to look back and be like, how the heck did that happen? Well, we talked about this. Other than John Bond going 4-0 against LSU, I don't know of anyone who had the the like success like you had against Ole Miss. You could argue a rival. Nick Fitz with uh, A&M. He absolutely owned A&M. Yeah. But there's no rivalry. Like It's different with Ole Miss and even with LSU a little uh, bit. Well, what stands out to me with, with the 14-2, and two, to answer your question, is that the two games we lost were at home and we won the series. 
So my freshman and junior year, we went two and one in the regular season weekend series at home. So we won the two series. So it was like, if you could pick two games to lose, like those were the two to pick. You know, going six and zero in Oxford—that's something that's just insane to me as well. And and not to mention my sophomore year in 2017. You shouldn't have won all this. Game. We weren't that great. <laughs> no. I was our Sunday starter, and I'm not a good pitcher. <laughs> it, it's it's just mind boggling to me, man. I mean, now, granted, yeah, yeah, we had Brent Rooker in 2017, and that's a, that's that helps. But man, like we were struggling on the mound. We had like eight Tommy Johns, and it, it was just a it was a year like on paper. It was like, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, this is about to be a grind. But we still went to a super regional. We just ran into the best team in baseball that year, which was LSU. Mm -hmm. It was like LSU's 2017 was LSU's perfect storm. They just, mm -hmm. they blew it in the national championship against a mid-major, you know, coastal Carolina. It was, who just finished hot. Yeah. They were the Arizona of, you know, 20, you know, just finished hot. Yeah. Hey, so when, when you do talking about that rivalry, you know, in football, they only get to play once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about the game this week and so on. In baseball, y'all get to play four times, sometimes more, just depending on the SEC tournament. But mm -hmm. did Cohen in your first year, your freshman year, mm -hmm. when you were able to break the starting lineup and then take off, mm -hmm. did did Cohen have a little bit, bit different approach with Ole Miss? Or is it, Bo, we play 56 games, that it's just all the it, same thing? With Coach Cohen, the, the Ole Miss game obviously meant a little, like more to him because he's a Mississippi State guy. But, man, it – it meant a lot to me. Like, I remember uh, my freshman year, the Ole Miss weekend my freshman year, I hit a home run Saturday, and that was like the game that finally solidified my starting job. Now, okay. granted, I, I was starting before that, but it was finally like, all right, that weekend kind of like just, I'm, I'm not coming out anymore. Because I started opening day my freshman year, got pulled, started in Los Angeles on the trip to uh, California, got pulled. Uh, it, I kept getting pulled out a lot, and I kept, you know, just pinch hitting my way back in that lineup one way or another. But, yes, the Ole Miss game, I remember my freshman year game one Friday, I get there, and I was the first one there by, like, probably an hour and a half. Like, I'm just just itching to get out there, man. I was like, this is like this is what, you know, the state of Mississippi needs. And, like, it, it, it's every year. It's just what you look forward to. And I remember uh, one of my teammates – uh, from Florida came in. He was like, "Hey man, relax. It's just another game." And I was like, "Nah, -uh. nah, it's not." I, you know, I, I went to a predominantly Ole Miss high school too, so like, right. I, I've lived a lot like the rivalry. My uncle was a tight end at Ole Miss. Like I, like this is this isn't new to me. Like I, I get it. I get it. it. It so did Cohen? Did he actually reference it on a Thursday I, or ab Friday? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, he was like, "Look, I don't need to talk about who we're playing." Like, it, in other words. Yeah if, yeah, if you need a pep talk right now, you're not ready. So, like, Coach Cohen just does um, – he did an unbelievable job of making sure we were ready to go every weekend. And and I've said it I've said it since day one. I'll say it today. I, I'm behind Coach Cohen 100%. I, I love that guy, and uh, I, I know he's always going to have our programs in, in the right spot. Look, he, he cares about Mississippi State more than anyone I know. Like, he's, he's doing his best to bring us a national championship like he has for so long now, since the 80s. And, you know, and I'm behind him 100%. Well, if anybody can do it, Lamonis, Gotro, and Foxhall, uh, you would think would have a great chance over the next couple of years to do it. Jake Mangum on the Out of Bounds Show, two College World Series SEC hit king. He's now with the New York Mets. He joins us on the Out of Bounds Show presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Bundle your auto and home and save with your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Blake? Given that you did go 14-2 and two against Ole Miss, just say that one more time, uh, if you were going to give a 30-second, 60-second pep talk to a state team that is undermanned, kind of like 2017, undermanned, dealing with all kinds of different injuries and off-the-field issues, some 90% of which you don't have any control over, sure. right? Mm -hmm. What would you say to that team who, I mean, moral victory maybe against Georgia, but you're, for all intents and purposes, this has been a tough, tough season. What would you say to that team walking into the Egg Bowl Saturday? Look, we all hate the term – moral victories but that georgia game that 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 was one of the happiest i've ever been to to be a bulldog like for football references like that was awesome but pep talk wise man throw the gloves off man it's egg bowl week let's go it's thanksgiving time and you know what that means uh i do wish the game was on thanksgiving day I, I love that tradition i know some people don't i like it on thanksgiving day but man to the team like man throw the gloves off you know what week it is records don't matter 
keep the golden egg at home, man. Keep the golden egg at home. Um, we've we've owned this rivalry for a for a couple few years now, and there's no reason to change it now. Like I don't care who we got out there. We all we got. We all we need. Go out there and win the dang game. Like that's it. Forty nine scholarship players made the trip against Georgia. We're hearing fifty two scholarship players will will make the the trip from MSU against Ole Miss. Three o'clock Saturday, SEC Network, and uh, Ole Miss is about an, an eight-point favorite. It's gone down from 12 to eight and a half right now. Eight and a half, okay. That so is eight crazy. and a half point favorite, Ole Miss, uh, a touchdown and two and a half points, almost a touchdown and a field goal. Um, what, what did you tell me, Blake, the over-under in the game was? 65 and a half was the last I checked. 65 uh, I don't, and a half. I don't, I don't see the overhitting. Uh, I think it's going to be a... I might be way off here, but I, I don't see the overheading. Uh, 60, oh, wow. 65 well, we and a half is a lot about, of points. So that's 21 points more than it, what it was for, for Georgia State. And they actually hit the over. That was the first over Georgia's hit. I mean, oh. State's hit in their last six games. Right. Uh, um, the only time Mike, Kip, Mike Leach and Lane Kiffin have met, Washington State and USC in this 2013. This is weird, by the way. Washington State won that game 10-7. to 7. Look, we, we've been talking about this matchup <laughs> so for 11 weird. months. Like, no you doubt. know what I mean? Like, no doubt. We, we get the Kiffin-Leach matchup. Like, this is... It'll be a like, defensive it, game. <laughs> this is such a great time to be in Mississippi for sports. Like, college baseball is always rolling. Basketball, we got, you know, it, both teams... I, I, I don't know how we're going to be this year, but I, I love Allen as the head coach. So, I mean, I, you know... Just overall, Mississippi is just a great spot to be right now. And we get a Kiffin Leach matchup. Like, you can't beat that. It, who knows what's going to I I wish I could just hear that conversation pregame between those two on the field. That would oh, be a, that would be great. Uh, they need to mic that up. Must but, see TV. Yeah. Because they know each other and they like each other. Now they're, you know, they both need W's on Saturday. But Leach was asked a question last night. Uh, and he talked about knowing Monty Kiffin, Lane's dad. I saw the quote. That was an awesome quote. Yeah. Uh, in the NFL. And then the fact that. He and Lane know each other, and he actually thinks Lane is interesting and kind of cool to hang out with because most of the coaches' meetings, he basically said coaches are boring mm -hmm. and that Lane wasn't, Incredible. which I thought was funny. I guess they, they hung out a little bit at the Pac-12 meetings. All right, Jake Mangum, New York Mets, um, on the Out of Bounds show, SEC hit king, and he'll be in town off and on, I guess, for the next uh, couple of months, and then he'll uh, head down to, is it Port St. Lucie? Port St. Lucie, yep. Okay. What, 30 seconds left? No? All right. Port St. Lucie, Florida. And Jake's goal is to uh, eventually break through to double A this season. That's my goal, but who knows? That's out of my control. I'm just going to work and, and see what happens. What town is is double A Mets? Double A is Binghamton, New York. High A is the Brooklyn Cyclones now. So the team I played for in 2019 is now the high A team. Okay. I'm expecting to be at one of those two, and, uh, and who knows? It, it, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go work. We will have you back in studio soon, my man. Well, what's the predictions for this Saturday? I got uh, Ole Miss 49, Mississippi State 27. Okay. Play. Give it to I'm, me. I'm, dogs, one, dogs win. We got, uh, who, we give who, me the dogs. Who, who'd have 30 thought? seconds. Who'd have thought? Uh, I, got, got, uh, I got the dogs 24-17. 24-17. Jake Mangum on the Out of Bounds Show. Happy Thanksgiving, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Don't forget about the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Search the Out of Bounds Show. The show is also always presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Bundle your auto and home and save with your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. We will see you tomorrow.